Cooking a meal for that special person in your life can be one of the most amazing and intimate things you can possibly do for them. Uh, cooking is an expression of love, caring and uh, really an opportunity quite frankly to impress the other person. So today I'm going to do some recipes that will definitely leave a great impression on that special person. We're going to do um, some really cool stuff. First one yeah, is a spinach and mushroom cannelloni. Right? This is restaurant style cooking at home. Let me take you through these ingredients. Okay, um, Cannelloni comes from Italy. First thing I want to do is make our uh, filling for our cannelloni. So let's saute some of these onions off. Pan is nice and hot. I'm going to start with some olive oil. Absolutely essential. Three to four medium sized onions. While our onions are sorting, let's start chopping up our mushrooms. So I'm just going to start by chopping up some of these mushrooms, okay, nice and fine. Okay, so I've chopped up beautiful button mushrooms. Our onions are sorting away nicely. Okay, I'm just going to season the onion. A little bit of salt. Now, for the next component of our filling, I have over here spinach which I have blanched. Okay, blanching is simply a process of boiling or steaming the spinach until it's completely cooked. Okay, so I'm just squeezing out the water as much as possible. Now I need to chop it up fairly fine. Let's add our mushrooms to our now beautifully sauteed and softened onions. And saute them until the mushrooms are nice and cooked. Soft. Little bit of seasoning, very important. So some salt and then a nice crack of pepper. This sauce is actually really, really multi-purpose. This filling, you can uh, use it to uh, layer a lasagna. You can use it to stuff cannelloni. Uh, you can add cream to it and, and serve it with pasta. Serve it on the side of fish, uh, meat, um, chicken, absolutely anything you want. Let's add our finely chopped spinach to our pan. I'm just going to combine all of these simple and beautiful elements. So a little salt and a nice crack of pepper. Okay, we leave that to simmer. Let's get down to making our tomato sauce. So first, chop up about three onions onions are done I'm now going to add a little bit of grated parmesan and turn this heat off all right use the residual heat to kind of absorb and melt all this lovely cheese. So we leave our filling to cool a little bit. Now to our simple passata. I'm starting with some olive oil and a little knob of butter. 
right? Just to give it some extra flavor. I'm also adding a generous amount of butter to our filling for flavor and for moisture. I'm going to transfer this pan to the back here and leave that filling to cool. In the meantime, let's make that lovely quick passata. Now, into my pan go our couple of chopped onions. So my onions for the passata have taken on a nice bit of color. Yeah, a little bit of golden brown around the edges. That is perfect. Now, let's add our tomato puree. Okay, time for us to build some flavor into our passata. So, good amount of salt, then to balance the acidity of the tomatoes and give it that lovely kind of depth and sweetness a generous couple of teaspoons of sugar good generous amount of pepper as well some chili flakes right our puree is now beginning to bubble up and cook out very important Now, for the Italians, one herb that is born to go with tomatoes, right? And that is basil. So, in typical traditional Italian fashion, we now add some beautiful chopped basil to our passata. Some right now, some towards the end for that fresh bit of flavor and aroma that that basil is going to impart. Look at those colors, beautiful. I'm going to let that sauce simmer away for a good 15 minutes or so, 15 to maybe 20 minutes until it's darker in color, reduced, beautifully concentrated and most importantly cooked out to perfection. I am extremely happy with this passata. Smells beautiful, really fresh. Okay, the tomatoes have cooked down. Look at that, all of that excess moisture or water in the tomatoes has evaporated. Right, it's darkened a little bit in color. Now let's get down to stuffing those cannelloni shells with our filling. So I've preheated the oven to 180 degrees C. Right, that should be perfect. Okay, so I'm simply going to take some of this filling and carefully start to stuff the shell. So when you're making a, a cannelloni, for instance, if you don't get these cannelloni tubes, right, you can use uh, lasagna sheets for the same thing. You can also make crepes, right? Make yourself some crepes uh, or, you know, thin pancakes, right? And you can then um, just stuff those pancakes with a filling such as this. So I'm just stuffing them as you can see, evenly. Yeah, doesn't matter if some of it comes out the sides, looks very, very nice. Right, so our beautiful cannelloni shells or tubes have been filled with our spinach, mushroom, onion and parmesan cheese stuffing. Now all we need to do is spoon over or rather just pour over some of this lovely fresh passata. Not too much of that sauce, okay? You don't want to drown it. Before we put it in the oven though, some more fresh parmesan. You can use any processed 
grated cheese also if you like cheddar feel free some fresh basil crack of pepper a little bit of beautiful extra virgin olive oil okay into our oven 180 degrees my cannelloni has been in the oven for a good 20 25 minutes right at 180 degrees it's smelling absolutely ready right time for us to take it out and plate it okay let's let's serve up this cannelloni then i'm just going to drizzle over a little bit of olive oil and to finish it off a nice sprinkling of some parmesan over the top so that is my first recipe of today right a beautiful fresh spinach and mushroom cannelloni with a fresh passata over the top baked until delicious steaming hot and honestly quite exquisite sure to impress for that special meal don't go away when you come back we've got some more impressive recipes